Welcome to DB Anatomy. Under the development of CVS, in this video, let us study the development of atria and the interatrial septum. The primitive heart tube is made up of four bulges. To recapitulate, from the venous to the arterial end, they are sinus venosus, primitive atria, primitive ventricle and bulbous cordis. Now, between sinus venosus and the primitive atria, that is shown in the arrow, and uh, in this picture, it is at this exactly at this place, the following changes start happening. Initially, the sinoatrial orifice is wide and oval. Next, it becomes slit like and starts shifting towards the right side. Now, it is totally towards the right side. And finally, it becomes a small opening. Observe there, there is right venous wall, left venous wall and at the apical part, they are united together by septum spurium. Now, between atrium and the ventricle, that is at this place, changes are observed. Now at the AV canal, following changes are observed. Common atrioventricular canal is oval in shape. Now four bulges are seen, two lateral, one superior and one inferior. Superior and inferior outgrow the lateral and they fuse with each other to form the AV cushion, dividing this canal into right and the left half. Now parallelly, the primitive atrium is partitioned into right and the left half by the formation of the interatrial septum. You have seen that AV cushions are formed. Now from the roof of the primitive atrium, a partition starts growing downwards towards the AV cushion. We call this as septum primum. It grows downwards towards the AV cushion leaving a small opening at the down, which we call it as ostium prime. But slowly, it meets the AV cushion. At this juncture, we don't want the total separation of the right and the left side of the heart. So this is compensated by the formation of another opening at the upper end of the septum prime, which we now call it as septum secundum. Now towards the right side of the septum primum, another partition starts growing down. We call it as septum secundum. It starts moving towards the endocardial cushion, resulting in a formation of an oblique passage. This directs the blood from the right to the left side of the heart and now it is called as the foramen ovale. This is primitive atrium. This is sinus venosus. These are venous valves. There is formation of interatrial septum which divides the primitive atrium into right and the left half. The sinus venosus get absorbed into the right half of the primitive atrium to form the right atrium. These are the venous valves and here the blue color portion is a part of the right atrium formed from the absorbed sinus venosus and the white colored part is formed from the right half of the primitive atrium. What is the contribution from the venous valve? The venous valve has right part and the left part and at the cranial they join together to form the septum spurium. Now the right venous valve overgrows the left and two limbic bands appear, the superior and the inferior, dividing the right venous valve into three parts. The portion above the superior limbic band forms the crista terminalis. The portion between the superior and the inferior limbic band forms the valve of the inferior vena cava. The portion 
below the inferior limbic band forms the valve of the coronary sinus. Development of the left atrium. This is left half of the primitive atrium. This is pulmonary vein coming from the developing lung. This is opening into the posterior wall of the left atrium. This gets absorbed into the left atrium. Now we can see that two pulmonary veins are opening separately. And each of them now again gets absorbed forming four pulmonary veins opening into the posterior wall of the left atrium. Thus, left atrium develops from the left half of the primitive atrium, absorption of the pulmonary veins and from the left half of the atrioventricular canal. To summarize, the right horn of the sinus venous is contributes for the smooth part of the right atrium. The septum sporium, upper half of the right venous valve forms the crista terminalis. The lower part of the right venous valve forms the valve of the inferior vena cava and the coronary sinus. The right half of the primitive atrium forms the rough trabeculated part of the right atrium. The right half of the AV canal forms the most ventral smooth part. So these all together form the right atrium. The left half of the primitive atrium, absorption of the pulmonary vein and left half of the atrioventricular canal forms the left atrium. Coming to the applied aspect, atrial septal defect. If the interatrial septum is not formed properly, this results in what is called as atrial septal defects. Many kids are born with this AST, but within one year, most of them close, resulting in the complete separation of the two halves. But in some of the children, it may not require a surgery, especially if there is a symptom of shunting of the blood in the opposite direction, that is from the left to the right side of the heart. This defect may be seen in the ostium primum or ostium secundum. So patent foramen ovale. We have seen that the foramen ovale is located at the lower end of the septum secundum. Before birth, since the pressure on the right side is more and left side is less, there is a flow of blood from right to the left. But after the birth, once the lung starts functioning, the automatically the higher pressure on the left side will oppose the lower flap with the higher one, closing it functionally at birth. But in some 20% of the people, it may not close totally, resulting in what is called as patent foramen ovale. Most of the time, it is asymptomatic. Let's study the development of the ventricles in the next video. Thank you.